Hello everybody, this is John Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage and we're back with another of our 5 Minute Histories videos and today I'm in Mount Washington. Behind me is the Mount Washington Octagon. Right now it's uh, a conference center run by Hopkins University but before that, way before that, 1855, it was the Mount Washington Female Academy and that's where we're going to start our story. It was built again in 1855 by a, a German Reformed Church um, and its leader, Reverend Elias Heiner. Um, and they built a girls finishing school back in the middle of the 1800s and that kind of made sense. But why an octagon? Why did they build it as an octagon? For that we have to turn back the clock a little bit before it to a gentleman um, named Orson Squire Fowler and he was a heck of a historical figure. He was a phrenologist born in New York in the early 1800s and he was a phrenologist. If you haven't heard of that, that's that pseudoscience that believed, the advocates believed that you could tell how smart a person was and about their characteristics by uh, feeling around the bumps on their heads. Unfortunately, it turned into one of the basis for uh, racism, uh, believing that African Americans and their bumps made them less intellectual, um, less smart than others. Of course, that was total bunk, but that's what Fowler believed. He was also anti-Semitic, so count that in his category also. But he was a complicated figure. Before the Civil War, he was an outspoken abolitionist, um, railing against slavery, which he called a monstrous evil. At a time when women had very few rights, he was a champion for women's rights. At a time when industrialists were putting young children to work in factories, he was an advocate for the rights of children and labor laws. He was a publisher, um, and because of his efforts, uh, uh, Leaves of Grass, the great American set of poems, was published. And he was a teetotaler and a vegetarian and an animal rights advocate. So um, if nothing, he was uh, passionate about a lot of causes um, and very active about them. But what does all that have to do with an octagon building behind me? Well, one of the things he believed was that octagon buildings were more healthy for uh, folks, especially working class folks. Um, he thought that they uh, had more windows than regular square or rectangular buildings, which brought in natural light and more ventilation in the summer. Um, and per square foot, um, they were cheaper to build. In 1848, he wrote a book. He published a book. Let me make sure I get it right. It was called The Octagon House, A Home for All, or A New, Cheap, Convenient, and Superior Mode of Building. That's what he was doing here. Um, and he put his money where his mouth was. Um, he, on his estate up on the Hudson River, he built an enormous octagon house, 42 uh, feet per side, 100 feet across, 60 rooms, and a cupola 70 feet above the ground. The really tremendous building. Um, he loved it. Everybody else called it Fowler's Folly, um, but he still loved it. Uh, he uh, unfortunately did not make it through the financial panic of 1857, eventually had to sell the building, and in 1897, the engineer for the town of Fishkill, New York, uh, put dynamite to it and blew it up. So it's unfortunately no longer with us. But the book was popular and the idea for octagon houses spread. So back to the 1850s, in our German Reformed Church in building a uh, essentially a boarding school, they bought into this idea of a healthy building with lots of windows and maybe a cheaper building as well to boot. Um, so that's where this came from. They operated it as the school for only about six years. Um, it closed in 1861 before the Civil War. Um, but before that, one of its uh, one of its maybe mo no most notorious graduates was a woman named Isabella Marie Boyd or Bell Boyd also known as the Cleopatra of Secession um, and the Siren of the Shenandoahs. She was a Confederate spy. Maybe one of her most uh, infamous spying uh, activities was she hid in a closet in a public house um, in uh, West Virginia, Martin, Martinsburg, I think was in Virginia at the time, and learned that the federal troops that were marching on Front Royal were not as numerous as they made out to be. She snuck across uh, federal lines and told Stonewall Jackson, who used the information uh, to obliterate the federal army. He wrote her a thank you note. She was captured six times, let go all of those six, including the last one when she was trying to flee to England by boat. Um, she got caught by Union blockade. One of her captors ends up marrying her and they eventually uh, moved to England and start a family. That's what kind of woman she was. Um, but the school after the Civil War, uh, the Sisters of Mercy got it. Um, a wealthy benefactor purchased the land um, and gave it to the sisters um, and they called it Mount St. Agnes. They turned it into a women 
Women's College. Um, Agnes was the name of the benefactor's wife. And it lasted a good long while up until 1971 as a women's college. Um, no longer graduating uh, Confederate spies. One of its wonderful graduates, though, and I know you'll know her name, and that's Barbara Mikulski, our senator from the state of Maryland. She, was, she is a graduate of here. In 1971, they merged with Loyola, and the building uh, sat vacant for a while, but Hopkins eventually purchased it and turned it into this conference center that's going strong today. I'm going to end with a final note, not about this building. Um, there are about 2,000 uh, octagon houses still left in the United States. Um, but to quote my former colleague, Eli Poussin, who said that we in Baltimore can turn almost anything into row houses. Down at the bottom of the hill here on Smith Avenue are two octagons turned into duplexes. So mini rows um, somehow uh, sliced down the middle with a wall. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.